times an hour to make sure that uh, this piece was on pace and on time um, um, to be what it needs to be. Um, Mata, you know, was part of the process. I did a lot of research. Um, I was, you know, looking up different Afrocentric um, people that I wanted to highlight. So we, so they all had a different representation. So they're all composites, even their faces. They're all composites of different faces. So I was looking at different faces, uh, different clothing, from the beads, the earrings, to the, the head pieces, to the hair design, everything, you know, I was, I was making sure everything was being done. To the, to the wrist pieces, she was wearing, she was wearing my piece. Um, so everything was super intentional. And oh, also, that's yours? Huh? That's yours? The one you wear? Yeah, yeah, same piece. Um, but every, every everything was like super intentional, and also one of the sorry, certain things came out you know even better than I planned. As this being my first bronze piece, um, I wanted to make sure that the details pop because one of the things that you'll find in bronze is that eyelashes are rare because it's it's just very difficult, and they didn't think that that was going to be possible. Even like earrings and stuff like that, you're not going to see this level of detail in bronze. Um, but because I was novice to it, it, it made me push the boundaries of what was possible. Um, even the process that, that I used, I used 3D printing. It was rare, it's rare to use 3D printing, so I had to have, have this done in, uh, in Oregon. So I started out in Texas and then I went to Oregon um, to work uh, with a special company that could actually work on this piece. So that's how we're able to get like, all these details and I wanted to make sure that the details are so strong, you know, because once again, to represent the culture. So even like from over here, you can see all the details in all the clothes, like all the dimensions. You can fit your fingers into the actual details. You can almost hold the beads and things of that nature, the earrings and stuff like that. Um, and uh, you want to talk about the faces? Yeah. So all the faces are also composites. I was when I was trying to capture uh, different individuals, I combined different faces to capture. Uh, Different, a lot of them are based on different facials that are found in Africa by African peoples. So even from a more Arab focused one, it's more like Eastern, uh, Middle uh, area, and also you know, how it was collected to the diaspora in general. So that's something that I, I was doing um, when I was uh, bringing these pieces together. Uh, Sister Sajda Wendy was like super helpful in this particular process for me working on this piece. She gave me a lot of important grace necessary to work on this. She had a lot of trust and belief in me that I think that if I didn't have, if that belief and trust was not there, there's no way this was going to get executed. Um, she believed and trusted that I was going to do well on the piece. She's actually, I didn't know, she's one of my collectors. So she owns uh, other pieces of mine. So I had no idea that that was the case um, but she really believed in me and it and honestly that was the energy that fueled me it was the belief and the trust in this large project this is not a small project at all it was a large project that meant a lot to her and to the home and uh but she trusted and believed in me and she had all the trust in the world in me <laughs> i was like i don't know why you trust me like that <laughs> but i was like all right so that really gave me the space that was necessary uh you know to do everything and everything that she would communicate i'll figure out how to translate it so you know even like when i in different concepts we're figuring out how to bring in uh, the honorable uh, Louis Mayor from Mills Square Con and Liza Muhammad and i and i put them all into like she said like put them into the briefcase so everything i was finding ways to bring into the um, to the art piece ultimately, and um, yeah, you and then this piece that you know in the in the evening and night it completely illuminates and glows. So the center piece has a very strong LED light that cracks open. All these LED lights are able to be controlled, and you know Wendy will you know finally choose like, how she wants all the, the LEDs in the setup to work and stuff like that. So that was also something that I had to figure out was how to do all of that. Um, this one who. Uh, Wendy has named uh, Malcolm is the one that brings in the power. So I actually was in the design and made it so that the power runs through his body. And this is, yeah, the power, that's why you don't see any ports or anything, but the power is coming through his body, through his foot, coming out through his hand. And he's the one that uh, brings power to the actual, to the actual piece. You um, say he has a battery? Uh, I think it's connected to power it's in wired. the house. No, wired. he's wired. Yeah, so it's, it's actually powered into the house. So, uh, but it actually has meaning. Yeah, yeah, it has meaning because he's so he's the FOI or the fruit of Islam. He is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad calls the first begotten of the dead, which represents that 
downtrodden black man that nobody tends to care about, nobody thinks about, but here he is powering the whole unity of this universe mm. that we put together. Wow. Well, everything had to be considered from the height of the, every single detail uh, had to be from the stitches, like everything, you know, and then when I was working on these, I, I had to make sure that all of that came out. There was nothing that, you know, can just happen. Everything, when I, when I, when the hair was not looking the way I needed it to be, I had to, you know, keep on pushing. So every little detail on this uh, was, you know, made sure was, was done correctly. Even, even just how the briefcases touched their body, that was something that I was conscious of. And actually that's, it's a more structural reason for that so that nothing could ever happen. If they were just hanging like that, there could be opportunity for those to, so that was something that, so every little detail is things I paid attention to. So the briefcase being attached to the body makes it more secure to them, even as the message is more secure. So that's where you see the consistency uh, in all that. Uh, and then all their, their hands, they're all at, they had to be all at the same height in order to make everything so work out. So even though there's different heights in terms of the men and the women, the hands have to be all at the same height. So there was a lot that was factored in. I made, I, I paid attention to hair textures very closely. So even he has different hair texture than him. You know, one has more coarse hair structure um, that represents a more so like African, where, where, where this guy has more like textured wavy hair and stuff like that. So these are all things that you'll be hard pressed to find regular bronze sculptures have because a lot of the people behind it are, you know, don't look like the people that actually created and not aware of, of those details. Even my, my man has like a fresh haircut and a lining. Yeah, he's got a good barber. Yeah, so I, those are things that I paid attention to that, you know, once again, most times uh, the creators of, of these sculptures are not going to pay attention to. Um, but I, I wanted to make sure it done. Buttons, everything, you know, was super important. Um, to them, so uh, yeah, even in picking the type of briefcase, but yeah, I yeah, we even we, went through a selection process over briefcases. Remember yes. that? Yep, yep, yep. So, from briefcases to, to the all, and that's where, like, once again, Mata and her friends, I laid out like I'll lay out a bunch of dresses, beads, hairstyles, everything, and lay out. And they were like, you know, giving some opinions and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, she, she got paid to do it, so she was on a uh, it was like on a little sit-down board where we had, um, so yeah. I think we want to do some photos and stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah.